A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints by Marion A. Habig, October 10th, St. Daniel and Companions, Martyrs, First Order. After the Franciscan Order had been blessed in the glorious death of its first martyrs, St. Berard and his four companions, holy rivalry was aroused among the children of St. Francis to offer their blood in preaching the faith of Christ. In 1227, Daniel, provincial of Calabria, a man of eminent sanctity, and six companions, Angelus, Samuel, Donalus, Leo, Ugolinus, and Nicholas, with the blessing of their minister general, went to Africa to preach the gospel to Christ to the Mohammedans. Landing at Kiuta, they resolved to preach in that large city. Before entering the city proper, they learned from Christian merchants that a strict order prohibited entrance to all Christians. They realized that their undertaking was fraught with the greatest danger, and they prepared themselves accordingly. On Saturday, October 2nd, they made their confession, received Holy Communion, and then spent the remainder of their day in prayer. In the evening, as our Lord did on the eve of His suffering, they washed one another's feet. On Sunday morning, they entered the city and began to preach to the crowds in the streets and public places, boldly declaring that salvation was to be found only in the name of Jesus. The city was in an uproar. The courageous preachers were thrown into prison. There they wrote to the Christian merchants in the suburbs. Blessed be God, the Father of mercies, who comforts us in all our tribulations. Our Lord has commanded us, go and preach the gospel to all creatures. He has said, the servant is not greater than the master. If men persecute you, remember that they first persecuted me. Struck by these words, we poor and unworthy servants of Jesus Christ have abandoned our home and have come to preach in this country for the glory of God and the salvation of souls and the confusion of obstinate infidels. And although we may have much to suffer, we are greatly comforted in the Lord, hoping Him, hoping He will be pleased to accept the sacrifice of our lives. To Him only be honor and glory forever. A week later, the prisoners were led before the governor, and an attempt was made to induce them to renounce their faith. First by promises, then by threats. All remained firm in their profession of, of Christ and were condemned to be beheaded. The six command companions now knelt down before Daniel, their superior, thanked him for providing them with the opportunity of winning a martyr's crown, and asked for a final blessing. Father Daniel, amid tears of holy joy, embraced each one, blessed them, and said, Let us rejoice in the Lord, my faithful companions, for this is a festival day for us. The holy angels are already, already coming to conduct our souls to the eternal mansions, and this day the white-robed martyrs will receive us into their holy company. Heaven is open before, above our heads. We shall soon be in possession of eternal happiness. And so their heads rolled from the block, but their souls took their flight to heaven. Their remains were later taken to Spain, where many miracles occurred to their through their intercession. Pope Leo X canonized them in 1516. On Veneration of the Holy Martyrs In our veneration of the saints and the holy martyrs, they deserve special attention. We venerate in them, to an extent, the blood of Christ, since the blood they shed is like a continuation of the blood which Christ shed for us on Mount Calvary. They sealed with their blood the truths for which Christ was crucified. By sacrificing their lives, they also gave proof of their perfect fidelity and supreme charity towards Christ, thus giving all Christians an encouraging example. The willing self-oblation of the holy martyrs should impel us to venerate these holy heroes of the faith and should fill us with great love for our holy religion. Consider the special way in which Holy Church draws our attention to the veneration of the holy martyrs. On their feast days, the priest approaches the altar clothed in red vestments. The color reminds us of the blood the martyrs shed. In offering their blood and their lives for the holy faith, they made the greatest sacrifice men can make. We should praise and bless them for it in the name of the Holy Church, whose glorious heroes they are. The red of the vestments also signifies the fire of love which God kindled in their hearts of the holy martyrs. That is also the purpose of the red color on the Feast of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles in the form of a fiery tongues and strengthened them remarkably. 
It is this fire of love that gives martyrdom its value. If I should deliver my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Hence, on the Feast of the Holy Martyrs, we should praise and thank God who gave the fire of love to so many thousands of his saints who became witnesses to their faith by shedding their blood. Consider that the martyrs gave proof of their fidelity even before they shed their blood. Faithful to the call of the apostolate, they went out to face danger after due preparation. They accepted reproach and pain patiently, even cheerfully, for the sake of Christ. Promises could not lure them, nor threats frighten them, to abandon him. We must imitate the martyrs in their fidelity, even if we are not called upon to shed our blood for Christ. Only in that way may we hope to please them by our veneration. The glorious crown which they have won should encourage us to remain faithful in our allegiance to Christ. Their powerful intercession will help us. Prayer of the Church As we rejoice, O Lord, at the crown which our brethren, thy martyrs, have won, may it, may it prudence in us, produce in us an increase of virtue, and at their intercession may it also be our comfort, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to you and have mercy upon you. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pax Eponum.